It's my honor and pleasure to welcome the ambassador today and also introduce KCFR. Karachi Council for Foreign Relations uh, has been making waves uh, since 2003. And uh, why it is more important than various other think tanks that uh, exist in the country is because we are the voice from Karachi. I will now formally welcome His Excellency uh, to the forum. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. This COVID makes us find new ways and means to interact with each other. And uh, thanks to these new technologies, we can still communicate and uh, get in touch. So on Pakistan-Turkish relationship, I should say that this is, this is more than a relationship. Uh, whenever I am asked to, you know, comment on the our bilateral relationship, I immediately object and say that uh, we need a correction here. Uh, the the thing between Turkey and Pakistan cannot be called a relationship because, for a relationship, by definition, you need two parties with a distance between themselves so that they can relate with each other. In case of Turkey and Pakistan, it is not correct because we do not have this distance to relate with, with each other. So our political relations with Pakistan has always been great. Uh, and uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, it is, it is still the same, uh, regardless of who is in power in, back in Turkey or here in Pakistan. We always have the excellent level of political relations between, between the two countries. As you will recall, the last high level event was President Erdogan's visit to Islamabad uh, in February this year just before the, you know, COVID timeout, if I may put it that way. And during that visit, it was once again clear that Pakistan and Turkey has a good legacy of brotherhood, cooperation, solidarity. And it was very good to see that bo both leaders on, on, the, on, the, on both sides they were very committed and keen to take this uh, relationship, this bond, uh, further uh, in the years to come. Pakistan is a very big and promising market. Uh, it has uh, huge resources and it has huge uh, capacity to be an important trade partner uh, of Turkey and beyond. So, inshallah, uh, we will see more Turkish business people, entrepreneurs coming in Pakistan and uh, hand in hand with their Pakistani counterparts. Uh, we will see uh, bilateral uh, activities increasing also in the field of investment, trade and economy in the coming, in the upcoming period. For the cultural and social activities, uh, Alhamdulillah, Turkey proves to be a very important destination for Pakistani uh, nationals uh, for their visit and pastime. Uh, we see the numbers of Pakistani visitors going to Turkey increasing every passing year. And uh, even this COVID period, despite the restrictions and, you know, all those uh, impediments uh, that we face, uh, we still, we were able to keep the, you know, the airline connection open. Uh, and uh, I am happy to report uh, to you that Turkey was one of the top destinations for the Pakistani tourists. I can see it with bare eyes that, you know, uh, the latest drama, Turkish drama, Arturo, had made a huge impact uh, here uh, in Pakistan. The numbers 
were you know uh, through the roof uh, we were not uh, familiar with such numbers even in turkey so uh, the pakistani brothers and sisters they kind of embraced this uh, tv series and turkey and pakistan are the two powers in this region uh, without which you know uh, any design any idea any uh, activity uh, can find ground uh, we should be we should be uh, demonstrating that with those i would like to uh, return the floor to the moderator and i will be more than happy uh, to discuss with you uh, the challenges, the questions that you might do, that you may have. Once again, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to address the distinguished uh, circle of uh, KCFR members and uh, friends. Thank you so much. My question is, UAE has recently recognized Israel and other countries are expected to follow. Even Saudi Arabia is probably on the way to recognizing Israel. My problem is they are recognizing Israel without anything in return in, with, with respect to the Palestinian cause. What are your comments on this? Thank you very much. Bye humble personal objection uh, comes in uh, to th that point. You can, as I said, you can establish political diplomatic relationship with any country you want, but if you try to, you know, uh, sugarcoat it with uh, some very uh, unrealistic uh, perceptions or expectations or commitments uh, that's I don't think that's the that's the best way to go so uh, my displeasure uh, would be uh, to that uh, specific point uh, what do you think can this be revived the relationship with Iran the things that are changing in the region the uh, the new uh, phenomena that we see in this region what does Turkey think about the relationship with Iran we see Iran as an important uh, regional country. Uh, you know the fact that there is no armed uh, conflict between the then Turkey, the Ottoman Empire, and you know the Safavid Iran uh, since the 17th century. Uh, so uh, it is our uh, most peaceful uh, border uh, for over, you know, uh, four decades. And uh, this is something that we really cherish. And I believe that's also, uh, it's also the same feeling uh, on the part of our Iranian brothers. Uh, I think it is best, it would be best if all our countries, Turkey, Pakistan, Iran, focus on this very practical aspect of uh, a kind of, uh, new economic and uh, trade trade partnership. Well, my question is that, you know, to promote economic relationship, it is absolutely necessary to have financial institutions of each country on both sides. I know of the fact that there's a Pakistani large bank that's been operating out of Istanbul for long years. As far as I know, Turkey has never had their banks present in Pakistan ever. Could your office persuade the Central Bank of Turkey to encourage Turkish banks to come to Pakistan? Yes, this is something that, you know, uh, we need to uh, uh, rectify, if I may put it that way. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, there are good uh, uh, institutional relationship between the, the state banks of the two countries. We should be more <clears throat> interactive uh, to, you know, to promote uh, to the Turkish banking institutions uh, about the uh, potential of the Pakistani financial uh, markets, and uh, I hope uh, they would also be like to like to be part of this uh, emerging market.
In terms of tourism, uh, how can Turkey, from your office, sir, encourage the Turkish tourists coming into Pakistan? His second question is, Kavadar is the upcoming hub for Pakistan, and the present government is very supportive for investment for Kavadar. So how can Turkish investors come in, and I'm working on a project for the tourism perspective for Gavadar region? Uh, first of all, I should, I think, uh, comment the steps that uh, Pakistani government is taking both you know in the field of promoting pakistan as an emerging destination for, for tourism uh, but also as for the practical steps it is commendable that uh, <coughs> last year uh, they came up with the decision that uh, uh, electronic visas uh, for uh, most of the countries uh, uh, they now put in place for Gwadar and for, uh, you know, uh, the wider uh, CPEC issue, I think, uh, as I said, uh, there is already an interest uh, on the part of Turkish entrepreneurs to come and, you know, uh, utilize the opportunities uh, in Pakistan already. The question I was given was uh, any possibility of Turkey removing 27% anti-dumping duty on denim fabric and uh, to some extent, 32% on garments from Pakistan. This year was particularly a difficult year for, for almost all countries, uh, including Turkey. So uh, in the earlier phase of this uh, COVID-19 uh, situation, uh, our government came up with uh, a decision, uh, you know, in order to protect the uh, domestic production but regardless of that, I should uh, encourage all the business people uh, that uh, once we have uh, we are back to normal uh, days and normal regulations, there are many fields uh, waiting to be utilized between Turkey and Pakistan in terms of uh, bilateral trade. There are many things that we can do together, and the only thing we should do uh, is to encourage our uh, business communities uh, to look for more opportunities in the respective countries. My question is regarding the shifting position of Middle East in the recent past, which has been taken with, uh, uh, it has been very, very uncomfortable for the Muslim world to see the shift of the position in Middle East and its continuing shift. Would you comment something what we look at it 20 years down the line between Pakistan, Israel and Turkey. As you will remember, also in the forefront, uh, trying to bridge the gap between Syria and Israel, uh, back in you know uh, early 2000s and you know mid mid 2000s. So we were very much actively involved uh, in the peace process uh, during that time. For some time now, uh, we have, yes, an embassy uh, in Tel Aviv, uh, but our level of representation is uh, quite uh, low uh, with, with Israel. Uh, I think uh, things uh, between Turkey and Israel uh, will not come to the point where it was uh, in the in the in the uh, in the history i will now request the chair uh, of karachi council for foreign relations mr kram segel to offer his vote of thanks thank you Huma, and thank you excellency for a very very uh, intensive uh, discussion and answering the questions uh, before thanking you i'd like to uh, um, talk about certain um, incidences and you started off with uh, uh, Palestine and Israel. I was in Davos uh, in 2009 when Shimon Peres and uh, Mr. Erdogan were on the stage in a plenary session. Now, uh, the, it, the audience was, the auditorium was jam packed and I couldn't get in, so I was standing at the door on the side of the stage on one side. Something happened on the stage. I was not there at that time, I came to know later. But it was something that uh, Mr. Shimon Peres had passed a remark about Israel and, um, and Mr. Erdogan got up and walked off the stage in Davos. Now, I was standing at, the, at that gate. I, I didn't really know what happened. When he came in front, he looked at me, he said, Pakistani. I said, yeah, he embraced me. You know? 
straight away. You know, I, you know it, for me, it was a great occasion, but after I came to know that because of that remark on is, uh, Israel, on a world stage, Mr. Ordegaard walked off, right? I would also like to mention here something about some issues that were raised about uh, armies intervention, et cetera, et cetera. Interventions do not take place if the leaders are not corrupt. I point out to you that a Turkish coup d'etat attempt took place in 2016. Two things happened. One, Mr. Erdogan went into the center of the storm. He flew in straight away to where Istanbul, where the eye of the storm was. Number two, that coup d'etat failed because the Turkish armed forces supported him. The, with the people in the streets and the Turkish armed forces, that is why the coup d'etat failed. Here, the coup d'etat do pass, maybe with reason, without reason. But if the, if the leaders are corrupt, that's exactly what's going to happen. Number two, uh, I would just like to point out about the level of our friendship. In uh, uh, 2000 and, uh, sorry, in 1974, uh, on 15 July 1974, uh, there was a coup d'etat in Cyprus. And, you know, because of that, because the coup d'etat was um, by the Greek junta, which is ruling Greece, and the coup d'etat took place, and they removed Archbishop Makarios and tilted the balance. Within immediately, Turkish uh, uh, Turkey gave a, a, a warning that if you do not uh, re, uh, restore the civilian government, we will intervene. Within five days, 20 July, they intervened, and that is why how Cyprus still remains divided. But what happened was the Turkish, the Cypriot government was restored. The Greek junta government fell, and Karamnelis, Karamna, uh, the Greek prime minister, was, came back and took over as a democratic prime minister. That was because of the Turkish invasion at that time of Cyprus on a needed basis. The second thing was, must have been very interesting. Uh, our prime minister at that time, Zulkarli Bhutto, was a very close friend of Karamnelis, very close friend. So he asked at that time that he would like to mediate uh, you know, between, because he knew Archbishop Makarios also, he said, I would like to mediate this dispute. So Turkish said immediately, the Greek Prime Minister said, yes, please go ahead. The Turkish said, yes, but we have a problem. They said, what is the problem? They said, you cannot be, uh, you, you cannot be, uh, you, you'd be prejudiced in this. He says, why? He says, Pakistan and Turkey, right or wrong? You cannot, you, whether we are right or wrong, you will support us. So it is not fair to the Greeks that you arbitrate this dispute. You know, Mr. Zulkar Bhutto decided that this was not diplomatic. I would also like to point out to you another uh, uh, incident, uh, which, uh, you know, other than this thing, that uh, there have been many inc incidences where uh, Pakistan and Turkey, I've been to Turkey many times. One of my best friends is in Turkey, Ms. Zohal Kurt. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I go a lot with my family. If my, my family members go there, she looks after them. I would also like to point out to you the recent uh, thing about Azerbaijan, where Turkey, Turkey, Turkey was supported by Pakistan without any this thing, that thing, absolutely. And that is why the Azerbaijan problem was solved in favor of what is right, because Nagorno Karabakh was a Muslim community, etc. Similarly, if you look back, I want to go back to the first question that was raised about the RCD, well, let's go back. What was the Baghdad Pact? The Baghdad Pact considered of Pakistan, Iran, Turkey, and Iraq, right? It was at that time sponsored by Western powers far away, United States, Britain, etc. Today, it's the reverse. Turkey, Iran, and Pakistan, whatever, for whatever it is worth, the friendship still exists. But today the friends are clearer, nearer, Russia and China. Right? So it is just a question of reviving uh, that problem. In the end, uh, you know, uh, um, Excellency, it's such a wonderful uh, thing having you uh, talk to us. And let me commend you on the way you answered the questions. And I would also not like to forget my friend Tolga Ochek, who is uh, the Consul General, Henri Constantia here. Uh, I remember an incident when the chairman, Crouch Electric, and there was some problem about his uh, uh, about the building where they were having Lexi substation something, and he rang me up and said, "You have no choice. <laughs> I'm Turkish. 
You, so, and he's right, he was right. He was right. We had no choice but to solve the problem immediately or as fast as we could. So we have uh, a long history of relationship and uh, Mr. Ambassador, let me thank you very much. Let me thank all the participants, uh, actually a, a lot of participants. And I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Huma Bakai uh, for a wonderful moderation of this uh, excellent uh, webinar. And also uh, the members of the board of directors of KCFR. Thank you all. Thank you for being here.